everybody. Welcome back from a great Martin Luther King weekend. Hope everyone's well rested because we're getting real serious today with pattern making. So I'm here with Amanda. Hi guys. We're here at GCT. We're gonna go through a little bit of what's involved in pattern making. Uh, yesterday Amanda posted her sketches and we got some feedback on some of the design elements. So if you have any other feedback, definitely uh, continue to comment and let us know. But um, today we're really talking about the blueprints of design. So um, one of the things I actually learned as part of the 19th <laughs> Amendment team is that not every pattern is, is created equally. So um, I thought, you know, patterns were really kind of just everyone did them the same, but really patterns are almost like a fingerprint. Everyone kind of puts their own spin on them, but when you go into production, it's really important that certain things um, are, the are there. <laughs> there. So Amanda and I are going to tell you a little bit more about this and take you into week three, three uh, of designer challenge. So we're just going <laughs> full speed Straight ahead to the here. Factory. All right. So we're in our little makeshift studio right now. We're going to look at some pattern paper. Right. Okay. Close, Amanda. <laughs> Hi guys. Not too close, Gemma. <laughs> um, so I want to tell you a little bit more about pattern making. So while design is very much an art, it's also a science. So pattern making is a way to translate what you see as a garment or you see as a sketch into the actual blueprints of the final product. So what I have here today is our pattern paper, um, which is inspiring some of the print on the design. More about that in last week's video. Ah, it's really cool. Close up. Close up, which will be on the edges of our design. Awesome. So a little bit of history. Um, but basically, I want to tell you about what goes into a production-ready pattern because sometimes they don't teach you that in design school. It's important to know, especially when you're going to the manufacturer. You don't want anything to slow down your process. So when you're creating your pattern, you start with your draft, like your master pattern. That's what I'm working on now. Pattern paper. Pattern paper. <laughs> this is kind of like the rough draft. But eventually, once I've actually figured it out, made sure that um, it's as correct as I can make it on paper, then I will translate it into actual pattern pieces. Cool. So on the pattern piece, we have a few rules here for best right. practices. And this is when we get serious because serious. time is money and you don't want to hold up your manufacturer and you don't want anything to come out incorrect. So you always want to correctly mark all of your pattern pieces. These are still paper. We will get them digitized later, but you need to know what design they're going with, what size they are, um, and where the green line is. So green line basically says which direction the fabric should lie. Cool. So where is that? Green line, I just marked right oh, there, but it's also right here. Cool. Hey, hey. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Just put little arrows. Awesome. Industry speak. Put everything here. Um, um, why is green line important? Green line's important because your fabric um, lays in different ways. So the way that it's woven um, translates into how it's cut. So if my fabric is laid out straight, I want to make sure that my pattern matches the straight grain of whatever piece is underneath. Awesome. Or it can be on the bias, but that's another conversation. <laughs> um, next time. Yeah, next time. You also want to make sure that your um, seam allowances are correctly marked and notched. You see this? Notch. Notching. Notching. Do Notch. this. <laughs> so notching is a way for um, sewers to actually understand without looking at the fabric exactly how much seam allowance to allot each piece. So on paper, when you're cutting your fabric underneath, you are also cutting a little bit into each piece so that when this actually is a fabric piece, there's um, a gap right there and the seamstress will understand exactly how to sew it and where to sew it. So it's important to mark that. Um, I suggest probably two eighths of an inch to half an inch, well, half an inch for most pieces. And 
it's also important that that be true. So, not a great example here, but basically, you always want to make sure that all of your notch ends come at a direct 90 degree angle. Got it. Otherwise, it gets all wonky when you're actually manufacturing, and that's something that they don't always teach you in design school. But oh. you definitely need to know. This is like the real, the real side. All you design students are getting your money's worth. <laughs> I had a very strict professor at Parsons who did all the manufacturing for Donna Karen um, overseas, like oversaw it for 30 years, and he was also an ex-military man. So these rules have stuck with me, and they should stay. And so, well. what's wrong with that pattern piece? It's missing. Um, nothing's different. really wrong with it. If okay. this one doesn't have another seam allowance on this side, uh, it's just it. a straight piece. But if this had another seam allowance, it, it should be at an exact 90 degree angle. Even if something's at a curve, like over here, mm -hmm. you wouldn't create like you would always create a 90 degree angle no matter what. Ah, uh, got it. Okay. At the end. Awesome. Um, the other thing for production ready pieces, there's no such thing as cut on folds at all. Uh, that's cute when you're in design school or if you're only making one piece, but hopefully you're not only making one piece, you're going to be making lots of them. And when someone is cutting your stuff, it needs to be laid out flat. It's also important that when you go and digitize, when they um, lay out everything, they'll know the best way to lay it out on the fabric and make the most use of the fabric, which is important because um, the money required for the actual fabric, one, but also sustainability um, and time and everything else. So. so for all of the non-designers, it's basically like you have to make all the pieces of the puzzle in order to present the most accurate Yeah, you know, folding the puzzle pieces. You can't just say that this puzzle represents two puzzle pieces no. and then assume that the puzzle will come together. No. I like that. That's a no, good analogy. I like that one a lot. Cool. Um, so that's, and you also want to, you know, just make sure everything is clearly marked. So once we're done with the actual pattern pieces, you put it in a pretty envelope. Um, a lot of fashion and design is still done primarily um, with pencil and paper. But you want to put it into a cutter's must where, and we have them on 19thAmendment.com, so it's standardized. Right which actually shows exactly how many pattern pieces are going to be in this design and in this folder. Um, any notes, any information around like which pieces go with what fabrics, you can put in your technical design sketch, which is a way to read the final garment piece. Um, and this one doesn't have it, but you can add in sketches of each pattern piece if there are any like funky pieces or things that you wanna show. So going back to our puzzle analogy, this would be like puzzle. having instructions to put the puzzle <laughs> pieces together that clearly indicated yes. the shape of the piece and what they were made out of and how they all fit together. Absolutely. Awesome. So this is something that your manufacturer will look at and we digitize on 19th Amendment um, and they can look at digitally, but also when we bring it to the grader, and the grader is the one who digitizes and makes different sizes. Um, I make a standard size six for all of my patterns. They're going to look at this and make sure that they've got all the puzzle pieces all in one place. Great. Um, and I know not everyone has access to digitization, but that's another uh, service that we offer at 19th Amendment. Being in New York's garment district, we have some great relationships with the graders who offer us and our designers um, really great pricing. Pattern makers, and I think too. What? <laughs> no, here. I think too a lot of our manufacturers also provide pattern making as a side service so if you find a manufacturer on 19th Amendment that you really like to work with um, you should definitely ask them about their pattern making um, they can include it as like a full production sample service um, and then of course if you do need other help and you want to just get in touch with us we can also point you in the right direction I'm gonna okay cool so that's kind of like a very brief pattern making 101. I'll be working on this probably most of the weekend because this will take me at least half a day. Wow. Can you show us the, <laughs> the sketch and what's the sketch of so, what's actually happening? So okay. that will take you half a day, huh? 
Well, more. are you judging me, Jemma? No, I'm just, I'm just curious. <laughs> totally. It might, it might, because so on this one, I'm actually making it out of one complete pattern piece aside from like to this save trim. Time. To save time, to save cost on the actual cutting of the garment, um, and to save fabric. So it's a more sustainable piece in the actual manufacturing of it. It will be one seam from the kimono sleeve all the way down on the sides. Awesome. Um, and then the only other seams will be for the like neck piece. So next week we'll get to see your final pattern and then maybe you can tell us more about how you incorporated some I, ways to save yes, on the production. Yes, some smart ways because I like to think backwards on how much this is going to cost everyone to right. actually purchase and what my margin will be because right. I need to make some cash on this um, and be profitable and I'll also have a muslin sewn of this so you guys will actually get to see what the next step in the process looks like and see it in person. All right, Amanda, we'll get busy. All right. No, we're <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> Bye, guys.